no one came to me at dot dot go and said you should be a design engineer they love the like the tenacity of like just doing it and trying to build something because it was yeah. real hi everyone today i'm joined by carl uh carl do you want to tell us a bit about yourself sure thing yeah uh i'm carl kosh design engineer at dot dot go the first design engineer at dot dot go so carl can you tell everyone what is a design engineer let's just start there good uh <laughs> so i think What's funny about it is I've been trying to figure that out myself, I think, a fair yeah. bit, um, especially for the past year or so. So I think looking back, if I'm going to look back on my history, I've been what would be called now a design engineer for quite a long time. Yeah. And essentially, a design engineer is somebody who bridges the gap between design and engineering, hence the smushing together of the two terms. So is it like front end engineering and then visual yeah. UI design? Typically, yes. Okay. Because you... you probably unlikely to find someone who is very strong in a visual sense of design, but then like really strong at back end. Yes. Because they're yeah. two very sort of different uh, mindsets, different ways of working. Yeah. Um, so typically the design engineer does the engineering that is what we call like the front of the front end. So it's what I would say about 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ago would have just been called front end. And that is HTML, CSS, maybe a bit of JavaScript. So okay, mostly sorry. style oriented. Let me get super specific. So mm. don't, don't go, are you like using React? Are you doing yeah. front end React stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I say at don't, don't go, I'm probably pushing more into a, what we would class the modern design engineer as, okay. uh, which is being very comfortable in the space of React, building web apps, building prototypes or building production code, which is what I do. So okay. I spend all my time designing and shipping the front end of any project that I work on now, 100%. That's awesome, that's yeah. so, so cool. And so my next question is, how did you get into this? Because you said it took you a while to work out mm. that this was the right role for you. Yeah. It took a while for it, like you to work out what design engineering meant at DuckDuckGo. Yeah. Yeah, so how did it come about? How did it come around? Yeah, so I guess, I mean, I started my career as a, an account manager. So okay. completely Very different. all over yeah. <laughs> But it became useful later on because at DuckDuckGo, we, project manage and lead everything we work on. So yeah. that skill, useful, it's come back. But I kind of felt a bit lost. And early, early on, 2007, a bit before, yeah. uh, I'd been really into MySpace. MySpace was a thing. Not yeah. everyone will remember this, especially if you're younger, but MySpace was a thing. And you could edit your MySpace page by just editing any yeah, like, like CSS HTML. properties. Yeah, yeah, CSS, HTML styles. You just did it in any text box and it worked. And so that was my first introduction to like, what is code and how does code change the way something looks? So it's yeah. like combination of design and engineering. And so I got really into that and then didn't know what that meant as a job. So I just kind of left it alone. As I kind of got through my career, I wanted to pivot into design. I didn't have a traditional design degree. Yeah. But I just started exploring it and enjoying it again. And then also at the same time, there was this kind of like code thing kind of hanging on. Uh, and I was working in an agency and was doing sort of a bit of design, mostly account management. And then all of a sudden this uh, developer, I'm still really good friends with now, is like, hey, we're building this WordPress stuff. It's PHP. Do you want to help me? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what PHP is. <laughs> but like, sure. Uh, and so I started learning how to deal with the templates in PHP and then also just like mess around with the CSS. So he would be throwing the site at me saying, fix the padding, fix the things you're bothered by. Yeah. So I don't have to. And so that introduced me to this idea of like a designer can go and change that impact. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they can make those changes. I mean, you've been doing a ton of this recently. Yes. Yeah. Shipping changes and being like, rather than having that extra layer of like communication, then ship it's I'll just ship it because yeah. it's, why not? Yeah. yeah. Am I, so the role I've just finished at, like we had such a small front end team and I was like, okay, well, these changes are annoying me. It's going to take six months for the like roadmap to yep. clear up to get it live. Yep. Or I could just like get into a code editor, work out how to change it myself, and just push it straight to the yeah. repo. Yeah. And be done. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly it. So over the time, that's what I've been doing is like after this agency stuff, when I started to pivot more towards proper design, I ended up working at a, a renewable energy startup. Oh, so cool. Startup, tiny. There was four of us. Yeah. If you could do it, you could. You should do They're it. They're going to get you doing it. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, just ship it, ship it, ship it. It's like, okay, cool. So I learned a load of stuff. I learned Vue, which is like the other React. Yes. Um, <laughs> and figured out how to do that. So I was prototyping in Vue, then shipping Vue. Then I joined another startup. We're doing mobile apps. 
uh, Swift UI had just come out. Okay. Yeah. Nobody in the company knew how Swift UI worked. It was a complete like, uh, yeah. Uh, and so they were like, we're going to use Swift UI for some reason. <laughs> and, and I was like, that sounds fun. Like, I'd love to learn this thing. And they're like, okay, cool. And so we sat down and just went, right, you figure that out. You figure that out. And so I ended up shipping 50% of the app because like someone had to. Yeah. Right? And you were just the guy. And I was just it. the one. I was just enjoying it. So, yeah. and then that got me into like Swift UI and now I've built tons of Swift UI apps. And that's like a thing I love doing and still do. And then, yeah, I did a lot of side project stuff, worked for some freelance clients where I was doing both. And then eventually joined DuckDuckGo and ended up having this opportunity to basically discuss the concept of how do we take a product designer and turn them into a design engineer and yeah. what does that look like? How did you approach that? Did you have like a management conversation oh, right. yeah. about that? Like, um, I've been there about six months. We were starting to work on this thing called chat, which we've now released. Yeah. So we have an AI chat experience. And we wanted to prototype, like, what does that look like? Yeah. So me being naive, I'm there. I'm like, I've played with the Vassell SDK for this. Like, I've already built something kind of like this for my own enjoyment. Like, why don't I just whip up a React prototype that looks like .go and share it? And so I did that, like, hacked together this thing, and it worked and looked cool. Uh, and then got into this meeting. CEO's there, CTO, <laughs> a wow. bunch of people. So anyway, I'm like, cool, here's my prototype. <laughs> I show them and they're like, oh, this is great. So where is this? And I was like, oh, I can give you a link. Send them a link, the cell link, yeah. immediately take it down. Because I obviously, I, you know, naive, I didn't think about the fact that like, hey, I'm putting this go branding. Thing, yeah, I'm putting stuff nice. in a, a place that is not under our control, right? Uh, so that's lesson number one. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Um, they love the like the tenacity of like just doing it and trying to build something because it's yeah. real. So anyway, like a little bit later, I'm working on a project for entertainment, and so CTO is like, "Cool. Uh, do you want to try prototyping this project in React in our code? Uh, and just take it as far as you can." Wow. Right. But then in my head, the uh, just take it as far as you can meant ship it yeah right that, that's like what challenge. he wanted yeah, yeah that's what he wanted but he's like just don't worry about it just prototype it take as far as you can so i was like right determination let's go yeah and i just sat and we like you know made tons of mistakes had to keep bugging all these engineers like hey how does this work how's that work why is this broken i didn't get properly onboarded as an engineer so i was missing loads of stuff like it was awful. Presumably because you haven't had like a formal engineering or a formal like design background. Is there stuff that you just like missed? Or? Oh yeah, loads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, especially because in like a, an environment like .go, we're very privacy oriented. Yes. And so there is a load of red tape into like how you get into our code base, how you then like make changes, push stuff, do stuff. It's all Git based. We're all using GitHub, but yeah. like it's just loads of stuff. Like organization you know. specific stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's all these commands and specific stuff to restart certain bits of back end, front end, blah, blah. Like it's like, it just gets yeah. mental. So I was a bit lost, but kind of hacked my way through it and then eventually shipped that. That was great. One of the things that this kind of whole thing has been able to do for me and for us as a company is allow like that design thinking to spread into engineering because sometimes there's stuff that you like from a design perspective, it's like intrinsically clear, but sometimes it's hard to like know, if you don't know the limitations of the code base and things like that, it's hard to know how you can connect all these dots. Just now you were saying that you're the design engineer at DuckDuckGo. Do you think there, well, first, let me just say, are there other design engineers? Is it just you there? It's just, so it's just you. Yeah. And um, basically I wanted to ask for anyone watching, like what advice would you have for people who think that, hey, they're super interested in coding and front end code and they want to like, transition into being a design engineer yeah like how would you advise people to maybe approach their company to bring it up or look for design engineering roles yeah. i think well first of all with role stuff i think it's becoming more of a like, yeah it's like a phrase the way yeah like now know. yeah it, before it was this kind of ethereal thing and everyone then, called them unicorns for yeah, years and yeah, years no, <laughs> you clearly love that name yes uh, but like it was it was kind of like a given for a period of time like early facebook that kind of stuff design engineers were like that's you were just a product designer you were a design engineer in a lot of ways yes that was kind of like an expectation most and of I think in like big tech company like people always say that in apple they don't use figma no because they, everyone just prototype yeah they yeah. just go straight into stuff yeah. you are yeah like why wouldn't you yeah it's actually a really easy language to work with yeah so like 
I think there's there's going to be more of that. Like that's definitely a thing. There will be roles, and I think places like Apple they don't call it that. They just say you're a designer, but it's like you're expected to be able to. Yeah, or or it's just you're expected to ship the thing in whatever format that is best for what you're trying to communicate. Right. Yeah. Some people use Keynote, but I think for people who are specifically looking for those roles, anything in the kind of tech space, especially like complex dashboard type products they want design engineers because yeah. you kind of need to know the code to know the design like yes. it, they yeah. kind of want to go same. together um but i think like the way that i did it as i kind of spoke about earlier it was sort of a happy accident but i think you could manufacture that i guess if you yeah. wanted to by just thinking of like what's the thing that you're working on that you feel you could prototype and that a prototype communicates the idea in a way that's more effective than, than just like a, a flat design. design. Yeah, because yeah. a figment prototype will get you so far, but like prototyping uh, AI chat interface, yeah. it just doesn't feel the same because you're not, you yeah, can't it's like type anything in and get an answer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that is the beauty of those interfaces, like you have to have it feel like that. And so for me, it was like the only way was, was through a real it. thing. Yeah. And it didn't take that long to build. In fact, it probably took less time to build that than it would to try and figure out a prototype that felt good enough. Yes. Um, so am I right in saying that your advice is just to like go out and build something that shows value I think so. in the company you're at? Yeah. I, that would be my like my gut, like either that or it's like go and do a side project and build stuff for yourself and like get excited by those things and then take that to your company and be like, hey, like, I know there's not an opportunity for me right now to do this here, but like here's this thing I've been working on that I'm really like happy with. Yeah. And then show it to some engineers on your team, like get their interests. Because that's another route in, is you get an engineer to, to be excited about what you're doing. They then speak to someone else who speaks to someone else who gets to the CTO to then get and you And then in, so, right? suddenly everyone's like, oh, did you yeah. know Carl can and he's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, that, would be, that would be the key for me. It's like, yeah, just, just try to play. Yeah. yeah, mess around, play, and then get that in front of people as early as possible and just float the idea. like. No one came to me at DuckDuckGo and said, you should be a design engineer. I'd been doing this for a year and I was like, I don't know, sounds terrible, but I was looking at my LinkedIn and I'm like, I'm a design engineer, but like it just says product, senior product designer, like I'm kind of doing more than that. Like I want to be able to reflect that. So I just spoke to my career advisor and I said, hey, look, I don't want to change anything. I just want to have my external title, say design engineer. That's all I care about. Is that cool? And he was like, give me a minute. <laughs> and then disappeared and then heard nothing. And then a week later, he comes back and was like, give me a little bit longer. You're like, okay, fine. All right. Yeah. Um, and then he came back another week later and he's like, so I've had a chat and actually we've decided we're going to create an official role and we're going to put all wow. of the things in place so that we're able to properly ship this uh, as a role you're going to be uh, officially able to be appraised as a design engineer with you know some changes to your job specification that suit it and we're also going to be able to hire into this role in the future so wow. it creates this space so I, i'm the first but i'm not going to be the last okay yeah awesome that's that's so awesome but this has been such such an amazing conversation it's been so awesome to hear about it and um, cool. just before we go carl where can people find more of your stuff online you can go to carlkosh.me. You'll be able to see the spelling. It's awkward. Danish. One of the best websites on the internet. I love Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a labor of love. But that's another thing, actually, on that note. That should be your place. If you're a design engineer or you're a budding design engineer, your website is like your playground. Yeah. That's where you should learn about new things. Try AI. Try uh, implementing anything, design styles or like specific code things you want to try. Do it there. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. No worries, Thanks man. for being on the channel. Thanks, thanks for everyone me. for watching. Thank you.